This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist right here in Hawaii, and uh, I am really tickled because I've got a really great friend and great all-around person with me today, and her name is Dana Anderson. Welcome, Dana, to the show. My pleasure. I'm Thank so glad so to be here, Thank you so much for coming Steve. on. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. So, so we were talking just before the show, oh, yes. we were trying to track where, how we met, and, and we came to the conclusion, I think it was through NAMI? Basically through NAMI Hawaii, yeah. yes. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and uh, we're both members of the board there. And um, I get tired of hearing myself talk. So why don't you talk a little bit about what NAMI is about, what it's for? What NAMI is about is uh, it, it's a nationwide program for families and people who are living with people who are suffering mental illness. And it's a resource area for uh, referrals for therapists and, and people like you, but it's also to help people cope with the strains of caretaking of uh, a son, a daughter, a husband, a wife uh, on a daily basis. And we all know mental illness is a daily opportunity for for difficulty uh, for everyone. So um, NAMI Hawaii has be become, I think, very important to the Honolulu community and to the community uh, on all the islands. We have chapters now, affiliates, on almost all of the islands, where uh, programs like Family to Family help people be trained to anticipate problems with, with a son or a daughter, a husband, whatever. Uh, and how to deal with that on a daily basis. That's the educational program? That's the, the educational family. program, yes. And it's free? It's free. Yeah. Uh, it is necessary. It, it's open to anyone who is living with someone challenged with mental illness. Um, or I cannot take the course. I want to take the course as a board member, but I'm not allowed to take the course because I don't live with anyone who is struggling. Yeah. Uh, so well, I think I don't know about the living with. Um, I'm not sure. We can yeah. double check. But we'll I think, check. like, if you have a son or a daughter who is out on the street. Oh yeah. Certainly, you could use NAMI services. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. No, it doesn't need to be that immediate, but it right. does need to be. Uh, or even if they're in some sort of a program. Exactly. But th there must be the impact on that. That kind of. Mother, son, mother, daughter, right. father, daughter, you know, all of that sort of thing. Yeah. Where uh, everyone is taken prisoner by the illness. Uh, you know, no one ever raised their hand to say, oh, I think I'd like to be a mental, <laughs> mentally ill person, please. Right. Any more than addiction. Right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in recovery from alcoholism. I didn't come out of the womb with my arm in the air saying, <laughs> I'd like to grow up to be an alcoholic, please. <laughs> Uh, and so fortunately, I've been in recovery for 28 years, wow. but I am sensitive to, to that sort of same kind of atmosphere or landscape that affects everyone who, who deals with some, some form of mental illness. So. Yeah. And yeah, and as you know, I run a support group. There yes, are, yes. what, five support groups on I believe Oahu so. now? I believe so, yes. Right? They yeah. happen once a month, and my experience, personally, uh, in the support group when I was just a member, not the facilitator, was it's emotionally um, overwhelming the first time you come to one of these support groups mm -hmm. because it's the first time that you're in front of people that really get it. Yes. And if somebody has not been through that firsthand, there's just no way Yes. to, I mean, training as a therapist really doesn't cut it. <laughs> Of course, but because of course. It, it's. Uh, but there's, that's what's so wonderful about it being a peer group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the miracle that finally tells you you are not alone. You don't have to go through this all by yourself. Uh, there are people like you who are who have their stories that are very much like yours, or mine, or you know, 
And suddenly that, that wasteland that you found yourself in coping with, with a difficult situation doesn't have to be empty anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's the miracle. That's what NAMI does is to, to educate the public, hopefully bring better understanding to what mental illness is and all of its various guises, uh, but also to let people know that it's kind of a new normal in a very odd way of putting things, and that you don't have to do it by yourself. You can, yeah. you know, you have help. You have people in it with you. I know uh, many people come away from the support group meetings. <laughs> it, it's funny. It's it's. I guess it's physically impossible, but. Everybody comes away thinking, oh, my problems aren't as bad as those. <laughs> <laughs> There's some comfort in that. I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. 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 Well, because I guess it's like a new normal. Yeah. Like you get used to whatever your situation exactly. is. Exactly. Exactly. Right? And, but when you hear someone else's and it's a little bit different and new, it's like, oh, that's way worse. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's kind of, but the new normal as a, as a phrase is really kind of a stunning phrase. You know, that you're, it's almost like the exception to the rule is some sort of father knows best family somewhere that I don't think really exists. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone is affected in some way by mental disturbance of some kind, right. a diagnosable illness. Uh, one in four is the, is the figure that we use. Mm -hmm. One in four people deals with uh, someone themselves or someone in their families with depression or uh, schizoaffective disorders or bipolar or all of these things which don't need to carry the stigma that they used to carry. Yeah. And that's part of NAMI's mission also is to eliminate the stigma about mental illness and say wait you know, if you have diabetes, you treat it with insulin or whatever it is that you have. Uh, if you have a stroke, you, you do what you need to do to, to deal with those. If you have mental illness, you also seek the kind of therapies that you need to help you, you know, put all of that in a kind of perspective. And obviously it doesn't always work. Um, it's a very slippery slope, as you're very well aware of. Uh, but hopefully we're bringing more people to understand that they, they, they're not alone in this. It's not, it's not an odd thing. It's, it's, a, it's a normal thing, oddly enough. So. Yeah, and it's, um, it's really strange how when it's a disease of the brain, mm. because that's the most acceptable model right now, mm -hmm. is a mental illness is a disease. Mm -hmm. Right, um, the same as diabetes mm -hmm. or anything else, uh, but people don't think of it that way. No, they don't. They think, no, they don't. oh, why is that person acting like that? Yeah, you know, oh, if they would just realize, like, those voices are just in their head. Yeah, I know. Right? I know. Why, why don't you just tell him, you know, yeah. that he's not the queen of France? Right. 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 <laughs> it's yeah. as if that's going to work. Yeah. Right. Or if yeah. he had enough willpower, it's like the same with alcoholism or substance addiction exactly right it's all like willpower it's like well guess what no it's not <laughs> it's not right yeah and um i don't know maybe people like to think that because if they think that then they think it couldn't happen to them maybe so maybe it's that right it's, it's the randomness yeah. of it i suppose or the apparent ra randomness of it right it's not totally random we yeah. know that it runs in families exactly um exactly. but still you know, somebody can be fine, and you, mm -hmm. you hear these, we hear these stories, somebody's fine, and mm -hmm. then they're not. And then they're not. No. And um, the adjustment as a parent, mm -hmm. like for me, mm -hmm. that has been, I, I, I wanted to say was, but I can't say was, because mm -hmm. it's an ongoing adjustment. Sure. sure. Um, every time things are good, you... Uh, you start having all kinds of hopes and dreams again. Of course. But there's a little voice inside that says, be careful. I know. You, you know, yeah. take it one day at a time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But hope is so important. Yeah. So important. Yeah, so it's a balance. 
It right? is, I mean, yeah, yeah, without hope, you fall into depression, and right. that's yeah. an, another major problem. Sure. Right? If that isn't already a problem. Yeah. But if you begin to, I mean, the other side of the spectrum is like, yeah, you have hope, but then you, you know, you start to fantasize like, oh, it's gone forever. It's, it's, I know. You know, this was a nightmare that went away and now everything's going to be fine. And, you know, now he or she is going to have a full-time job and be fine and have a family and everything's going to be hunky-dory. Yeah. I think that's why support groups are so important. Um, because we are reminded, even whether it's AA or whether it's a support group for, for families living with mental illness, we're reminded that there is nothing absolutely safe in the world, and there's not something absolutely sure that we can depend upon. Right. But we can, on a daily basis, save our lives minute by minute, and in some cases turn that life around on a dime, other times, no, when, when the diseases are, are deeper and more difficult and more complicated, as you mentioned with the brain, which is such an amazing and mysterious place. Yeah. Um, so how do, we, how do we do this thing, life? You know, how do we get through this with all of these challenges with family and with people we love and people we want to believe are going to be better forever and ever, amen. And there's a, there's a insecurity about that, obviously. There's a, we can't trust the way we used to trust in other mm -hmm. people. We can't, we can't quite love without wondering, oh, is that rug going to be pulled out from under us? And um, it makes me sad. There's a, there's a tremendous sort of sorrow for me attached to to the lives we can have, but it's, there's also a lot of joy for me in the lives that we can make for ourselves with, I say, a greater, you know, a higher power because I need to recognize that. I didn't, I didn't get sober all by myself. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing with mental illness, with proper treatment and, and, and people who understand conditions and whether it's pharmaceuticals or whether it's talk therapy or whatever it is. Uh, that there are are ways for all of us to to hope again and keep the hope alive that this wellness is going to happen. So whatever that means, you know. You made me think. I was listening to an interview on the radio uh, uh, with a director of uh, this internet, Netflix TV series called Godless, hmm. and um, he used a poem written by. Uh, medieval uh, Jewish poet, uh, mm -hmm. Yehuda Halevi, I think he said the name was. And the first line, and I'm paraphrasing, was uh, something like, it takes incredible courage to love that which is touched by death. Mm -hmm. And when you were talking about the sadness, mm -hmm. you know, that anxiety that you're going to love something with the knowledge that the rug could be pulled out from mm -hmm. under you. That's, you got to be brave. You have to be brave and you have to trust and you have to risk everything. Yeah. You have to risk everything. There's nothing Nobody said it's all going to be good for you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, I hope this is good for you. Please hang in there. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. Don't touch the mouse. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Good afternoon, my name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show 
at three o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Welcome back, I'm with Dana Anderson, and we're gonna switch organizations for a minute, or 15 minutes, and talk about an organization called OSHER. OSHER? Mm -hmm. OSHER, yeah. OSHER. <laughs> <laughs> so what is OSHA about? OSHER is, uh, OSHER is an institute at the University of Hawaii, where it also appears in other uh, places of higher learning. Lots of colleges and universities have it. And it's a, an institute for lifelong learning that was established by a man named Osher oh. years ago, uh, primarily for people who are older, in this case 50 years plus uh -huh. older, which now makes so them can, children today. So you can join today. AARP, you can join Osher. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and here in Hawaii, it's a wonderful opportunity for people to take courses kind of in things they've always wanted to take courses in but never wanted to get caught up in a university system uh -huh. or have to take tests or write papers or any of those things that used to scare them. You don't get grades? You don't get grades. Oh, hallelujah. You no, know, <laughs> and you sit and you have, at least in my case, in my course that I've just finished giving, uh, we had 19 people staying right on through from the very beginning. Uh, the course was called The Breathless Moment, and I had us all looking at art and reading poetry, especially Mary Oliver's poetry, um, T.S. Eliot and others, for those moments in art or music or, or language that catch your breath. And exactly that. And you go, oh my God, you know, or suddenly you see something, you feel something, you, your curiosity is, is piqued, your passion is suddenly whetted. And it's just a very, very exciting opportunity for, for people of, who have basically done, their, done a lot of their lives already and careers mm -hmm. and family and all that kind of stuff. And then, then there's the question, what do I do now? Uh -huh. uh, you know, and it's like we're all following this path together of, of discovery and uh, involvement in, in you know, whatever it is that piques our interest. So I'm offering a, a new course in the spring that I'm now immediately going to change the title of. I had, the title was A Dilettante's Guide to Lots of Really Good Stuff. Yeah, I think I put that I think it was there someplace, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I don't want to call it dilettante because the, the original meaning of dilettante was lover of the arts. But it has, over the years, degenerated. It's taken on almost a pejorative thing. A pejorative thing. Mm -hmm. and, and it makes you, if you call, you're, if you're, I call you a dilettante, it means you're a, a dabbler. Right. Uh, not someone really who, good at something. Not really good at anything, basically. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> and I wouldn't want that, you know, to, to, to cast a kind of negative Paul over this whole thing. Uh -huh. uh, but I've chosen some really wonderful things to look at with whoever takes this course. Uh, one being A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle, uh -huh. which always was considered a, a young people's reader, but it, right. it's not. It's a, it involves tesseracts, it involves folding space and time and traveling through it, and uh, things that I think we could probably miss the first time around if we read it at all before. Uh, along with that, I'm going to have people read the Book of Joy ah. with, by Desmond Tutu and His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Uh -huh. And it's a wonderful, wonderful compendium of, they spent five days together. Mm -hmm. um, they laughed, they cried, they talked love and life and faith and all sorts of stuff and uh, particularly in investigating Buddhism as opposed to Christianity. But there was always this mutuality of love and, and respect and, and kindness towards one another. What struck me is 
how silly they both could that be. Could be. I know they giggled. <laughs> they giggled. They, they were. Giggled. They were. They called each other naughty and rascals and. Yeah. It's hilarious. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's like twelve-year-olds. <laughs> I know. I love that, and but, and that kind of joy is yeah. what it was all about. The book is about cultivating joy in our lives, vis-a-vis -vis the sorrow that we were just talking about mm -hmm. earlier. Uh -huh. And it's possible to have both. You know, we do have sorrow in our lives because that's our basic condition, as the Buddhist would say. Mm -hmm. And we have to cultivate joy in order to kind of give ourselves reason for being. So that book is particularly good for that. Um, there's another book we're going to use called Lincoln in the Bardo. Mm. And it's a new novel about... Abraham Lincoln, having just lost his son, his 11-year-old son, Willie, to typhoid fever. And the president grieved just tremendously, just yeah. deeply. And yeah. the, the author, George Saunders, uh, imagines Lincoln going to the cemetery where Willie has been buried and being with him and somehow... In, in the world of fiction, he could hold his body mm. and rock with him. Mm. And uh, there is this terrible sorrow that, that pervades a lot of that, a lot of the president's presence in the cemetery. Then, though, comes the joy and some laughter because the ghosts are set afoot uh -huh. at night and can be, and they're visited by the goofiest people you want to meet. <laughs> and... Um, so there's a kind of a lovely balance in Lincoln in the Bardo and the Book of Joy. A Bardo is, the Bardo is that space in Buddhism that is between things, between this life and the next. Uh -huh. uh, it's like the thin time the Christians uh -huh. sometimes refer to, uh -huh. where, or at Halloween, All Hallows Eve, we, you know, that's when the spirits walk. Uh -huh. In, in uh, Japan, there's a whole whole period of hungry artists that are, are set afoot for a period of time, 24 hours or more, to kind of go looking for things that they missed when they were alive. So it's a, it's a lovely anticipation of, of another realm of being, of another ether of consciousness, and another place to, to kind of become a complete spirit. Mm. So I like that. I don't want to think that this is all there is. Um, and a, you don't have to be a Christian to do it, or a Buddhist, or whatever. Uh, but it but it helps to recognize that our ego is not the 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 biggest thing in in the universe. Um, one only has to look at the, the Hubble photos that have come back from mm -hmm. outer space, where we see that there are billions and billions of universes beyond ours. Mm -hmm. uh, and billions and billions of, of years of time mm -hmm. since the Big Bang or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, where do we fit in all that? You know, where does the speck, where does this little person that is Steve and Dana, where do we, what do we do with this? You know, we mm -hmm. have this, we have this breath, we have it for literally a nanosecond in some perspectives. Mm -hmm. Cosmic time. In cosmic time. And... How do we live it? How do we not live with it, but how do we live it is, is kind of the major question. So um, I love this stuff, and I'm very excited to, to be looking at it with a group of very intelligent and uh, interesting people, most of whom who have had careers uh, of many, many, many different kinds, who have been students, who continue to be students, uh, or who haven't been a student for, for ages. So. Uh, it's lovely to, 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 to discover together. It's a, I have no illusion about being a teacher of any of this. It's, it's a kind of a mutual discovery uh, period. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. No, I, I can, the conversations that will happen, I'm yeah. sure are going to yeah. be absent. So if, how, do, how does a person like Get me, there? yeah, how do you sign up? You sign up, <laughs> you, you go online, they now have online registration, uh -huh. and you find uh, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. I think you uh -huh. put the... Get it up on the uh, screen there, maybe? The thing, yeah, the, the uh, oh, there's website. Oh, the website. There it is. Yeah. OsherSocialSciences.Hawaii.edu. 
and click on that and you will be the new, uh, I don't think the new catalog is quite ready yet. Uh, so it's not even online it's yet. It's not even online yet, but yeah. this, this current catalog is online. So it can give you a sense of, of who to call, what to do. As a 50 plus year old human being, mm -hmm. you uh, can pay $60 and take any three courses that wow. Osher offers. And they're hugely different. Some are in film, some are in... Uh, How queen. many times does your class meet? My class, I'm probably going to meet eight times. And each time and is how long? Two hours. Wow. So other courses meet for So you six get your times. class basically like for $20, right? Because you can get three classes for $60. Is that what you said? Or is it just well, three? Ju well, mine is only one of two other classes you can take. Right. Yeah. And it's $60 for the whole ball of wax. It's $60 for three courses. <laughs> It's, like, it's amazing. It's it's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and the, the time goes like that, and yeah. we have a great time and lots of laughter. Do you know like yet when it's going to be? So I, I believe can, it's going like, to be on automatic. Mondays. Uh huh. Morning, uh, noon, afternoon. Afternoon, probably one to four. What would, would that be? To four hours? Be two three. to four. That'd be two, two hours. hours. Yeah, right. two, two, to four. Four. two to two four. Two to four on Mondays, probably. On Mondays, two to so four. So just look everybody for uh, the OSHA website and then find Dana Anderson's yes. class. Yes. Yes. And uh, it'll be a great time, yeah, I'm sure. It should be uh, fun. It, yeah. it really is. I love that description of the Bardo time. That the Bardo between. time, yes. I think that's why one of the things that makes Hawaii special and particularly for me that I run Kailua Beach every morning. Yes, yes. It's the boundary. It is the Between boundary. the land and the ocean. It is exactly right? that. That's what makes it amazing. It, it frees is. you to imagine. And, and it's all spirit. It's all spirit. It's all spirit, and it's where we really live and, and, and are able to manage the lives that we have. And I think that's a wonderful place to tell you to tune in next time for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. And thank you so much, Dana, for coming I on the show. I loved it. Thank you, Steve. Wasn't I right? It goes by like... <laughs>